Thursday. So yeah. last, last week. Friday I started here. Right. You're rolling? All right. I'm rolling. Yeah, last Friday I started here with Lisa and I, and we had the other two barns that we took down. So that went pretty well because the ground was dry. And now on the other side of this, it's, it's, a, it's a big it's mud pit. Mud hole. So we're up to this week. We, I got two guys this week, so we were able to take off the siding on Monday, some decking on Tuesday, then finished up the siding. And then Wednesday, we cut and dropped all the deck, this, this uh, three by eights, three by tens in sections. And then we were able to, and that was white oak and chestnut. And then we were able to stack it. And right now it's on the trailer and Anthony's gonna bring that home. But uh, today is Thursday, another mucky day. This, this whole week has been a, a pretty much a rain out. The and, weather's not cooperating. And uh, it's just a big mud fest here. So uh, it's like Woodstock back in the day, you know, it's, but we got Anthony here today, which is a great help. And uh, we're going to start to Pac-Man our way through. Uh, pretty much what we just finished up, we're going to try and take the whole, the structure as a whole, separate it into two halves. So there was a little secondary deck here. We just opened that up so that, and got rid of all the sheeting up on the roof. Um, and we're going to try and cut the ridge and separate the top plates and everything else, get our two halves, get rid of all the sheeting on the other side. Um, and then it's pretty much all downhill from there. We'll start taking the whole bench and, you know, we're going to try for one full assembly, lay it down on the ground and this is would That would be awesome. The way this is structurally, uh, uh, what do we call it? With all these metal bolts and uh, rods, this is a, this is probably one of the tighter barns that we've, Ever. we've gotten. This is, yeah. this is a lot of metal in this one. And with the rods and the extension, everything is bolted and connected the way it is in our factory almost yeah, it's, yeah, exactly it's it's, it's got nice. the rod the, the Queen plate post set up with a purlin and all all just it's, tied together with some it's, steel so. it's this barn it wasn't going anywhere so it's almost like gravity is holding everything together right. with sure. all the metal that we have going on so this is this a, a unique barn for for this setting here are you going to try to drop this whole bent with the metal intact? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the hope. So we'll, we'll that start. That would be a home run if we could. <laughs> We're going to start on that gable end. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll start from the outsides and work our way in. We'll probably tackle the half behind you first because that's, the, you know, definitely uh, the rot section. a little bit of rotted. Yeah, that whole back there. wall was just plywood and T111, you said? Yes. Yeah. So that, that was really nothing there. So that's been the rotted section. Uh, so, you know, even if you said, hey, let's let's tackle that side or, you know, I'm glad that Anthony's here today. That's just a big help with another brain of how do we how do we chop this thing up? Because this is this is what we're doing is this isn't going to be saved as a barn frame or, or nobody else. It's, it's unfortunate because it would be nice. But this is a this is a 90 this. foot by 35 foot beautiful dance hall frame for somebody. But. I mean, it's it's unfortunate because somebody like ourselves would hope to see this reassembled as a home, but and reality sets in. You know, you can only have so many museums, and now this is a privately owned piece of property. It did belong to the town at one point. Um, you know, and if we weren't doing what we do, it would just end up in the containers and be going off to the landfill. So, so we're we're, we're trying to do as much as we can. We're gonna probably get about what do you say, about twenty thousand board yeah, 20 feet. Yeah, twenty plus thousand. You know, so that's a little over a semi load of wood, but. The time we get it here and then we process it in Irvington, that 20,000 will probably be reduced down to 16,000 ish. Yeah, yeah, give it time we yeah. do the milling and the cutting and uh, the All processing. All depends on what we're making. That's right, you know. So uh, we're, we're at least happy that they allowed us the opportunity to take this one down. The tele telehandler? Yeah. Yes. That seems to be the main tool. How long have you had that? That's been probably three, three years, years for right? this one. Yeah. This one usually lives out in Ohio. Yeah, it's, it, this hits the road all, it does the circuit you know, around the, the country, road, yeah. you know. So, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this cost us a pretty penny back in the day. We were renting it every job, every job. So what it cost us in one year of rental. Cheaper to keep it. Yeah, so we, we just bought one and just said, all right, here was an, here's all the money. Make it disappear. Uh, that, that was 50 grand, you know, wow. in one shot. But I mean, it's got 50 foot, 55 foot reach, 10,000 pound capacity. So that's, that's a lot of, it's a lot of reach. But without, without it, we're doing this by hand and then we might as well just. No, no, no. <laughs> site. So it's just not, not even a question. No, 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 no. Without, without these machines, you can't do without this work. Yeah. yeah. 
we knew from day one that we needed a piece of equipment. So yeah, from the, sure. our first barn, we rented equipment, not even having anybody buying the material yet. We were just renting the equipment just to, to take down the home. barn so we can get a good story of why we're there. So, you know, and it's worked out. You know, it's 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 given us opportunity, and uh, we're excited for that. You Absolutely, know, opportunity is good. And those beams are. This one is oak, the yellow one is chestnut. I want to say the yellow one is chestnut as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to go up, we're going to get rid of the, the little purlin beam. I already cut it there, it, it literally moved an eighth of an inch. Which one are we talking about, this right here? The purlin here, it's a little, uh, little five by. Good! Where so do you want me to stand? Yeah, you're good there, I'm going to get rid of the get rid of this side then we'll do the wind braces and then that's going to drop What are the rafters made out of? Got some poplar. Uh, this whole section from here down was all poplar and the rest were chestnut and oak. Got another, another poplar up top here, but you can actually see the green ends on them, all the ones that were poplar. Oh yeah. So you got poplar, oak, 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 poplar, chestnut, and then another poplar. Just using whatever they have. That's it, whatever's close by. No, no Home Depot to go to. <laughs> Gonna do the ridge. Is anything coming down from that or no? Ah, uh, no. I just don't want you there. Alright. So, next we're gonna just the remaining joists on this side. We'll lose these and then we're gonna cut these back a little bit just to take some pressure off of the ridge. Um, and now we're going to tackle the track. So it's going to be fun. This metal track. This metal, yeah, the old hay trolley track here. Because unfortunately, they're unbelievably strong and never really want to let go. So. Hey, if you want to maybe wrap the chain on that, on that track, and on, uh, we can pull it down with the... So as far as this hay baling track, or yeah. what do you call this? Yeah, just a hay trolley. So we got the, like you said, the track. Um, it had the had the little brackets that supported it that went around the ridge and from, from rafter to rafter. They typically hang on and never really want to let go. Luckily, the old brackets are old enough that they're, they're cast, so they're pretty brittle. Um, so typically with a good smack, they'll, they'll bust through. So the hope is, is that we'll cut the rest of these rafters, we'll drop this little section of the ridge, so we'll make it you know we're making our way closer to having two separate barns at this point um and then we'll drop the the track down and hopefully be good to roll so you're going to pull this track down with the forks yes of the telehandler yep exactly all right cool yeah so if we come in and put the forks pretty much right between you know where the ridge would be and on top of here i mean the forks in and of themselves are probably close to 250 pounds and with a little extra weight behind the machine we should be all right Most importantly, we we'll just get rid of anything that's kind of hanging out.
So uh, you can see once we split the barn in two, this side has some tremendous insect and water damage. You can see the top plate here, the tie beam going across. I mean, it's just completely almost non-existent where those, those sistered up two by sixes are. Uh, so we'll start up top, we'll cut back the sheathing, cut back the fascia board, um, get rid of all the four bys, and this, there's really nothing to this whole end here. And then we'll be able to come in with the machine and then bent by bent, pluck it out, lay them down, disassemble. And that's what it's called a bent. So this is, each section is a bent about 12, 12 feet apart? Correct. Yeah, so each structure is considered, so yeah, this originally, I think, uh, what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it was an eight bent barn. So there's a lot of big timber there, luckily. We'll, we'll yield quite a bit out of that. We've got some nice eight by tens, six by eights, and... All chestnut and white oak. All chestnut and oak, yep. A little bit of poplar on the rafters. A little bit of poplar on the rafters. The actual one over the, the door, it must have been replaced at one time, uh, was poplar. And then you can see that it sisters up to what looks like oak. So it's, it's pretty crazy how you can see over time with, with the, you know, the repairs and whatever. Maybe this barn might have changed what it was being used for and what needed to be fit inside. So they might have opened that up a little bit, um, replacing. Because so far, the only poplar ones we've seen are those rafters at the same spot where the door was. So it might have been a smaller door originally. We're kind of kind of up in the air but as as we progress to take all the joists and rafters down we'll definitely be able to see if maybe it is just a poplar mixed in there or it's just specific to that one section which would indicate that there was a repair in that that portion at one time or they changed the structure a little bit and the rafters look like a, a full two inches yeah full two inch and a bunch of the joists from the second floor those are all full three inch so that's just unbelievably beautiful nice stuff i saw yeah. that on the trailer that yeah. looks good that's coming back to the shop and Hitting the floor tomorrow. <laughs> and it'll start getting denailed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Nice. So that's the that's the fun stuff. We'll, we'll cut those down. Can we'll you probably go straight to the top? Yeah, just about. We just gotta be mindful of where the um where the you know the track is. We gotta kinda of position it between that. Alright. All right. The track is gonna be pushing up against up against the yeah. Trail. Yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll actually switch sides, John. Well, we got to be careful of the actual little little queen posts for the purlin popped out. Oh, I see that. Yeah, look at that. Um, yeah, if you can. You got to be careful because the queen posts for the purlin popped out. So we gotta just be mindful of that. That's coming. Just gonna rock the boat a little bit, that's all. No big a deal. Mm -hmm. A decent amount, yeah, I'm amazed honestly. Catch this one. With my teeth. Alright. Alright. So we got our first load coming out. It's all the 3x8s. Um, 
nice oak and chestnut that's going to be coming back to the shop. We're going to start the denailing process, hopefully the beginning of this coming week, and start turning it into some tables and some flooring. So, first haul. So the nails will come out. It's going to go into the kiln. Yep. Yeah, so it'll be denailed first and foremost so that we can actually put it through the machinery. Um, and depending on which species it is, let's say for the chestnut, and I know we want to do some table tops with that, um, we'll plane it down, get the thickness rough to the final after the kiln, and then it goes in the kiln for about a week and a half. Sterilize it, bring the moisture content down, and we're ready to rock. Sounds good. And maybe I'll come over to the shop and we'll build something. Perfect. Yeah, that would be great. That would be cool. cool. All right. Awesome. Thanks, man. You got it, brother. Good to see you, I'll see you, you soon. Absolutely. But definitely a good time hanging out with Gary and Anthony and learning more about the barn and how they take the barns down. And if you didn't see it, I did post a video a few weeks ago, basically the first episode, where uh, before they're doing any work on the barn, Anthony gives us a tour of the barn and explains the process a little bit more. So I'll have a link to that video in the description. And also, while I was there, I found a short board I bought it home here, milled it up, and it turned out to be a beautiful piece of quarter sawn white oak. And I made a spline frame out of it. And I'll have a link to that video in the description as well. And uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, I hope that you'll follow me over there. It's fun to post Instagram stories and posts from the job site like that uh, barn project. So if you're, if you're into Instagram, uh, I think you're going to like it. So I hope that you'll check that out. And as always... Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.